In this video, I'm going to be talking about isochoric processes with ideal gases. So what is an ideal gas? Well, that's a gas that satisfies this equation, PV equals nRT. That's the ideal gas law. And what is an isochoric process? Well, an isochoric process is also known as an isovolumetric process. And an isovolumetric process has constant volume, or dV is zero. So the change in the volume is zero, and that's why it's constant. So if we take an example system, such as an ideal gas contained within an enclosed container, and we've got a piston up here. Now, normally this piston would be free to compress the gas, or the gas would be free to move the piston upwards and expand. But in an isochoric process, what we do is we fix the piston in place. We can put some kind of pin or lock mechanism in place. We can hold that piston down. And if we keep that piston in place, the volume stays constant. It's a completely rigid container, and this volume is not going to change. So that is the most important condition for an isochoric process. The change in volume is zero. Or in other words, it's a constant volume process. So let's have a look at some of the uh, quantities that we can actually talk about for isochoric processes. So it's very important to describe the internal energy. It's very important to describe the heat and the work. Right? These are the quantities that are linked together with the first law of thermodynamics. So let's have a look at what's going on with the work. If we represent the isochoric process on a PV diagram, what does that look like? Well, it's a vertical line. So isochoric heating is going to look like a line with an upwards arrow. So we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to move upwards. That would be a heating process at constant volume. If we were doing cooling instead, we would begin at the top, we would move down. So isochoric cooling starts at the top, moves down. It's always a vertical line on the PV diagram. What is a very important feature about this diagram is that the area under the curve is zero. There's no horizontal component to this curve. So this has to be zero. And if it's zero, that means the work is zero because the area under the curve corresponds to the work. So the work W is zero. We can put that into the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law of thermodynamics says the internal uh, energy of the system is going to change, or the delta U is only going to change if you have Q or W. But W is zero. If W is zero, that means the sum of Q and W is just equal to Q. So the change in internal energy is just Q, which is the heat. So the heat is the same as the change in internal energy. And that's equal to NCV delta T, where N is the number of moles, CV is the specific heat capacity at constant volume, and delta T is the change in temperature. So keep in mind, temperature is free to change, because here, the temperature is defined by the product of pressure and volume. So if you have a smaller product, you have a smaller temperature. If you have a larger product, you have a larger temperature. So the temperature is uniquely determined by the product of P and V because the number of moles are constant and R is constant. So you can't actually exchange matter. The system doesn't exchange matter with the surroundings. There's no movement of particles in or out So because it's a closed container. But what is something that can be exchanged with the environment? Heat. That's Q over here. Q can be exchanged with the environment. And Q is directly related to this delta T. So delta T is the change in temperature, and Q is the heat. And what is this factor over here? Well, N is the number of moles, or the number of particles that you have, and CV is the heat capacity at constant volume. Remember, it's the specific heat capacity because it's per unit of particles, or per unit of mole. So specifically, we're dealing with moles over here, but we could just as easily change these constants so that it is in term of, terms of number of particles rather than moles. Both of these are uh, equally uh, beneficial to understanding the system. So this product over here is going to determine the heat. And it's also the change in internal energy. So the work, because it's non-existent, it's zero, is not going to change the internal energy. There's no compression expansion work. And that's the only type of work we're considering. The only way you can change the internal energy, and thus the temperature, uh, of the system is through heat. So if heat flows in, then you're going to get a positive delta T. If heat flows out, you're going to get a negative delta T. So in cooling, heat can flow out, and that's going to mean there's a lowering of the temperature. The pressure will also decrease, because if the temperature falls, then this product over here on the right-hand side is going to decrease. 
But because V has to remain constant, pressure has to fall as well. So P has to decrease if T decreases. But what if we have heat flowing in? If we have heat flowing in, if this is a positive value, then we're going to have a positive delta T. That's going to increase this temperature. If the temperature goes up, this entire product on the right-hand side is going to increase. This is constant, so the pressure has to increase. So pressure and temperature are going to increase and decrease together because all of the other relevant quantities are just constants. So we could actually just say pressure is proportional to temperature for an isochoric process. And if we examine this process in real life, what you'll find is that a lot of real world systems have rigid containers. They could be gases. You could generalize this to systems that aren't even gases. But isochoric processes have a lot of applications. So it's important to recognize this relationship here. This is specifically for ideal gases. So this delta U is equal to Q. The takeaway message from this video is that isochoric processes are constant volume processes. And you can create a constant volume process by having a piston with a pin in it, with some kind of lock mechanism that stops this piston from compressing the gas and stops the gas from expanding and pushing the piston up. As long as the constant volume condition is met, you will have a vertical line in the PV diagram. And that vertical line can either correspond to isochoric cooling, which is moving from the top to the bottom, or heating, which is going from the bottom up to the top. This has no work because the area under the curve is zero. W is zero, and that allows us to infer by the first law of thermodynamics that the change in internal energy is the same as the heat. And that means the change in internal energy and the heat are both directly related to the change in temperature by a few constants over here, namely the heat capacity at uh, constant volume, which is understandable. Constant volume means the heat capacity of the constant volume. So this delta T, as we said before, is directly related to this pressure because all of the other relevant quantities in the ideal gas law are constant for this uh, certain example. So that was an isochoric process in, uh, in a little piston over here with an ideal gas.